Hello, David. Good evening, Mark. How are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad at all. Thank you. Your good self? Uh, well, a little flustered as I seem to have internet connectivity uh, issues there during the, oh, uh, the news man. intro, and I wasn't sure whether I was going to be here when it finished. The internet <laughs> gremlins. Let's hope they don't they yes. they don't strike, because I haven't got a clue what's going on. Um, <laughs> so, uh, certainly behind the scenes. So, for those of you that don't know me, my name's obviously Mark Roberts. I'm chair of Hound Parish Council, and with me is uh, our parish clerk, David. Uh, say hi, Dave. Good evening, so, everybody. This is our, our video blog um, this evening. We're going to run through briefly what we've got planned for the lineup for tonight. So we're going to do news in our area, first of all, then follow up with uh, COVID, what's going on in, in and around our, our area. Then uh, you'll be pleased to know um, the, the scheduled meeting with our MP, Paul Holmes. That's happening. Um, he is with us and waiting in our green room or as it as it stands at the moment. Uh, so we look forward to talking to him very shortly. Then we're going to finish up with uh, news in Hound 100 years ago and the most important thing, the upcoming dates for, for diaries. Also, if you haven't already done so, David's put all the information up on screen. Click the, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to be notified when the new videos, all the contact information is swinging across the bottom of your screen there. And I can see we've got 15 live, live viewers, which is amazing. Uh, I know uh, we're up to 76 six subscribers on our YouTube channel. So I had a look at it only, only a little while ago. Uh, EBC, the one that we're we're batting against, they're up to 130. So come on, we're getting there slowly but surely. Um, so David, you've been all right? Keeping okay? Yes, keeping all right. It's um, some bright, bright. Oh, we've lost David. Hopefully everybody else is still with me. I'm still going to carry on. Oh, uh, oh. Oh, no, the gremlins are back. They over definitely the, are. Uh, 20, just over 20 million having their first dose at the moment. So, yeah, it's it's all looking positive for uh, a good summer, hopefully. Fingers crossed. We just all need to to battle through this bit period now and, uh, and, and continue following the guidelines, and uh, we will get there. Yeah, 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 indeed. So what's happening? News in our area, David. What's, what's been going on? Anything? Any updates for us? Yeah, so I just wanted to remind people, and certainly those people that have been on social media, uh, you'll have seen the broadcast, or the post, sorry, from uh, the local police, uh, and we had Sergeant Ian on um, two weeks ago. Yes, uh, They're now using um, our Tankerville Pavilion on Station Road Recreation uh, Ground, at the top of Station Road and just off... Um, Queen's, Queen's Way, uh, next to Richard and Lisa's uh, little convenience shop. Uh, they're using that as a, as a kind of little stop-off point to do some paperwork to, to meet any members of the public who might want to come across and talk to them um, and so on. So uh, they're there. I did see the post. They were there on Sunday. Um, mm. I believe a couple of people popped across and had a chat with uh, with the officer that was there. They're, they're there at random times. We don't know uh, when they're going to be there, but they'll post whenever they are there. Uh, yeah. And hopefully, it's uh, you know those that want to have a chat with the police and don't, maybe don't want to do it via telephone or online. The yeah. opportunity is there, um, and it gets a bit more visibility of officers uh, within the parish. So, um, yeah, it's uh, for those that it's good, can't, good like stuff. Yeah, it, 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 indeed it is. I mean, we're, we're using we're using one of our spaces. We're making it available for the police, so it's it's all good. Um, David, just so you're aware, there's still a little bit of lag going on on your video. Um, you were you, your voice and and it was like a a bad '80s movie in the fact that your voice and what you were saying weren't in sync with one another. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So fingers crossed the gremlins don't the gremlins don't come back and hit us. So um, obviously everybody was still in the midst of COVID. COVID is still among, is still among us. Um, and how's this now affecting the parish, David? Are there any changes in the parish? What have you got? Uh, so not at the moment. Uh, obviously schools are due back um, next Monday, um, yep. and that's going to be the first, I guess, big test uh, of a larger movement of people. Um, and then, uh, as we talked about before, we're on our website. So if you go to our homepage and then click on our COVID-19 tab, yep. uh, it takes you through to our dedicated COVID page. And we've added into that the government's timetable um, for each step. So the first one, step 
step one is March the 8th, with the second uh, potential relaxing uh, on the 29th of March. Um, so it takes you through there of what, what the changes are at each step of these and hopefully uh, all the good news we've been having with the vaccinations and the, the positive um, impact that the, uh, the vaccination seems to be having on those that uh, have, so, uh, have so far had that. Uh, we'll be able to hit all of these dates, um, but that's there if you want to have a look. It's it, it's all over the place. Everyone's probably yeah, seen yeah, these yeah. in in some form, but it's on our page if you want to have a look. Oh. Of course, all of our other uh, bits are still down, on there. We see. Yeah, but keep it going. Let's, scrolling, let's find some stuff. Yeah. They're scrolling down to the bottom. Uh, what we've added into our local uh, services, so for food shops that deliver um, they're all there with some links with websites or telephone numbers pubs and cafes restaurants uh, that are offering again they're all there with their websites and telephone numbers Wonderful. pharmacy telephone numbers and yep. then we've added uh, we've we've so far managed to speak to, uh, to two of the hairdressers and barbers within the um, within the village Good. they're due to reopen all being well on the 12th of april Bookings Fingers only. Crossed. There'll be no yep. walk-ins for them uh, when they do reopen. Websites, uh, you can see there. Telephone contact numbers are there, and then yep. links through to their webs, uh, their Facebook, Facebook pages, social media pages, which means I believe you can book appointments there. So those, uh, well, unlike me, who um, don't don't have yeah. issues with long hair, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they are there if you um, if you want to use them. So uh, please Wonderful. do have a look at that COVID page web. Um, the web link will go in the comments underneath this video uh, once it's posted later on. Super duper. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Thank you for everything you are doing. And thank you to all of your staff. And remember to stay safe, everybody. Um, so now, without further ado, the, the bit that most of you are waiting for, we've got 17 live viewers. Superb. Remember, everybody, if you want plus, to... Plus two on Facebook, so 19. Superb. 17 watching us on YouTube, two on Facebook. So remember, you can post a question live to us. I can't guarantee we're going to get to your to be able to read it out and announce it straight away, but I will um, hopefully be able to get through all of them. So um, without further ado, let's bring Paul out of our green room if he's there. Good evening, Paul. Good evening. How are you, Mark? All right. Very, yes, very well. Very well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening on our Hound Parish uh, video news blog. It's very kind of you to spend some time. My pleasure. So, um, Paul, we've introduced you, brought you along this evening, really just so that we could, that everybody gets a chance to find out who you are. And then I've got some, some random questions that we're just going to throw at you. So, um, first of all, who is Paul Holmes? I am the Member of Parliament for Eastleigh, which covers Hound. I was elected in December uh, 2019 at the last general election. Uh, it's yep. a massive, massive privilege to be your MP. Uh, and I, I think one of the things that you haven't been able to find out who I am because I haven't been able to be around as much as I wanted to because of this dastardly COVID pandemic. Yeah. So um, I've been trying to get around as much as I can, uh, but I'm a normal guy. I'd like to think uh, my friends probably wouldn't tell you so. Um, I'm <laughs> currently, as well, probably as you can see from my drinks cabinet behind in my office in the commons, um, I like having a look and touring the pubs of the constituency, uh, yeah. but mostly it, we've got some great pubs, but mostly I just try and work hard all the time to make sure that we get noticed by government, to make sure we get the investment that we need, to make sure places like Hound uh, yeah. are represented properly. And that's my job. So that's me in a nutshell. OK. And so do you live in and around the Eastleigh area, Paul, when you're yeah. not up in the city? Yeah. So I, I've been up in London this week, but I live in Hedge End. Okay. Uh, I live in, uh, at the top end in the village in, in Hedge End. I've lived there yep. since I was elected. Uh, so uh, and I lived in Southampton for about a decade before that so i know the area well um and uh, i try and be down there as much as possible i'm coming back tomorrow i can't wait to come back yeah no 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 i yeah i, I don't envy you being being up in the big smoke um so a question that i've got if somebody was interested in being an mp how do they become in a nutshell because we haven't got much time how do they how do people become an mp uh, I think, well, the first thing I say is get involved with the party or stand yep. as an independent. But, you know, make sure you get involved in your local party. Uh, make sure that you've got a track record of delivering and, and that you've got an interest in not necessarily national politics, but but local politics and improving your area and your and your communities uh, and get it and get stuck in. Go out campaigning, have a vision 
uh, and apply to the national parties to get on their candidates list. That's what I did. I've stood a couple of times before. Uh, it's really important that we get more young people, more women, more ethnic minorities standing. Um, yeah. And if people want to get involved, uh, you know, I represent one party. I'm not being too political, but I represent one party as opposed to the others. Uh, yeah. If anyone wants to get involved in that way, they're more than welcome to get in touch and I can give them some advice. OK, super duper. And then, um, right, let's get down to some of the nitty gritty. I know David has probably sent you some questions, I think, um, hopefully. So what we do, let's just start with the first one. There's um, there's an increase, obviously, in Hamble Lane and Windover um, roundabout developments. Do you know the strategic direction with regards to health and safety and the, the, the increase in infrastructure? Is that something that you can assist with? Yeah, it is. And it, and it's one of the big concerns, Mark, since I've been elected that I and, and this is well publicised. So, you know, I am concerned about the number of new homes coming into Hamble and Hound. I'm concerned about the number of new homes coming into the constituency as a whole without the infrastructure being delivered by both the county council uh, and also the borough council. And, and I say as an MP, there's a limited amount that I can do in making sure that those local resources are allocated because uh, they are run by 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 councillors. Um, but I've been pushing government to make sure that we get the investment and the infrastructure that we need. I can help in uh, raising any specific issues that constituents have. So the Windover Roundabout and Hamble Lane has been a long standing issue that many people bring up with me. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm breaking any secrets to say that I'm currently looking at trying to get some money from the levelling up fund along with the county. Uh, which the Chancellor announced today, but also uh, in the autumn statement last year, to see if we can get the much needed improvements delivered for the Windover Roundabout and Hamble Lane, which needed improving for a very long time with the number of houses going down there. Yeah, the uh, yeah, the number of houses in, a, in the peninsula isn't good. Um, it's going the wrong way, unfortunately, and it doesn't look like there's the, the increase on the infrastructure. You know, schools, local amenity shops and stuff they're 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 not there um i think that's right and that's a major disagreement that i have with some of our councillors in in the borough and the county in that uh the local borough councillors built more housing than is required by government it's absolutely right to say that the government uh gives housing targets but the number of houses being built far exceeds those targets uh and that's a political decision down at the grass level with our councillors um, but you're absolutely right to say that the infrastructure is not being put in place as well. I, I want to see the county who are, you know, are not putting the infrastructure in place deliver that when we see these houses coming through, they should be funding the, the infrastructure in, uh, improvements needed. So should the borough. If you look at other parts of my constituency where we have the Horton Heath development going on, the infrastructure hasn't gone on. The gone in, sorry. These are all... Um, uh, able to be delivered by the planning applications that go forward. Uh, that's yep. a fundamental disagreement between me and local councillors. I think that's out there publicly. But if uh, you look yeah, it definitely, it definitely is out there publicly because um, obviously there's a there's a nice little spat between you and another councillor going on Twitter over the last couple of months that we won't go into. Um, no. However, it's certainly something that I raised with MIMS um, quite a while ago um, about trying to help us get infrastructure for our, for our peninsula. Um, bringing it even more local into Hound at the moment, we've got um, quite a what I would class as a major issue, and I know it concerns an awful lot of councillors and also an awful a lot of residents in our area. We've got the Grange Road development happening, yeah, um, and uh, with a footbridge or yeah. lack of a footbridge, um, we've got somewhere in the region of three hundred houses going up in Grange Road um, that are all going to well, not all, but a majority are going to need access to the infant school and the junior schools. Um, at the moment, there is no provision for a footbridge to go in on that Grange Road railway bridge. They are only going to paint white lines down the lane. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We need help. We've mm. asked our local councillors, um, and as of yet, those local councillors haven't step, stepped up. Um, and I think this is... Um, somewhat of an, um, an emergency because those houses are now being built. Uh, soon those houses will take occupancy and kids will be going to school. Um, parents will have the gauntlet of either working out to try and cross Grange Road to get in through Ingleside and then come the long way through Ingleside or take run the risk of going over the footbridge. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I, don't, I don't want there to be a loss of life at 
and I want to try and do everything that we possibly can to make our roads, our footpaths safe for our community. Um, and for whatever reason, God only knows, but somebody decided it was not in the interest of the, the parish to put a footbridge in, yet put two to three hundred houses in on that stretch of road. Can you help? Uh, well, and I'll put you on the spot because I've got your I've got your undivided attention. We need help. <laughs> yeah. And I know no, uh, it's been a mark, it's been a long standing issue and, and I've been invited to come and see Grange Road and, and the railway yep. bridge by Maury. And I and I and I did accept that, but obviously with current restrictions yeah, 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 completely. I, I will come down. I know the area well. I, I've driven over that a number of times. In fact, the last time I drove over that was when I went for a walk in the Royal Victoria Country Park and someone darted out of the bushes across that bridge it is a dangerous place uh, in, in its current form this goes back to what we've just said about housing i don't think the infrastructure is going in i don't think both councils are taking that seriously i have written to the county and i think i made contact with the borough but i will come back and check with you uh, mark on uh, sorry confirm that with you uh, mark um but we do need a footbridge there um, yeah, we do. I mean, if sorry to butt in, if you look at the, the Hamble Lane footbridge, the one that goes um, literally the main road into into Hamble, there's a footbridge there. All right, that's serving the immediate the immediate station. Um, but I know there was quite a big sum of money that was um, branded around that there would be a loss of revenue to the railway line and so on and so forth, which is why the development didn't happen. But it kind of means that they kind of stuck a price on somebody's head, um, and. I don't. What I don't want to do is be in a, be in this situation in a year's time, talking to our county councillors and talking to to our MP, saying, "Yeah, well, we told them about it. We said it was going to happen, and we've now got two or three deaths on our case." So, I agree with you. I think I think we do need to do something about it. I will contact both councils again, uh, and I will also contact to see whether there's anything that we can do either with highways or with national rail, just to see whether we can have a reassessment done or a, a traffic assessment done and I will come back to you and your colleagues uh, on that but ultimately I can try and push for this and, uh, and, it, and it's not me uh, passing the buck at all but this again comes down to the disagreement that I have about the amount of infrastructure going in. It is crazy to me that 300 houses have been approved down there with the current state of, of how that road and Grange Road is and uh, you know I've, I've been speaking to some of your councillors about that. I will come down with along with uh, Michael Preston, who is uh, who's standing at the next elections to be able to look at that. It is in our manifesto to try and get something done about that. Uh, yeah. But but we will we will push this as far as we can go. Cool. Um, Lisa Lisa um, has just put up there. It's really dangerous. This needs to be addressed. The footbridge needs to be in place. Grange Road. Yep, completely, Lisa. Hopefully, um, you know we've we've already dis we've dis discussed it. Uh, moving on, we mentioned the footbridge. Uh, I don't know whether you know, Paul, but there are a few traffic regulation orders that are in this area. I don't know whether it it's kind of. I don't want to say it, but above or below your pay grade. Um, but we've got some TROs that certainly happen in, in our area. Beach Lane Station Road. Uh, there's one just down in Hamble, which is Sydney Avenue. Seem to be a little bit bonkers traffic regulation orders that don't seem to be coming from the parishioners. Or there's certainly no delegation or not delegation, no discussion with the parishioners. I, what do you want? Mm. Um, uh, mm. These T TROs seem to be coming out of the blue and... Um, just trying to work out what we can do about them. Obviously, we can we can oppose them or, or object or support them through the Eastleigh Borough Council website. Um, but um, it just seems I don't know whether you could if, you know if there's any light that you can shed on any of these TROs or uh, anything we can do to do with these TROs. Well, not specifically. Again, because I think, uh, and this is not me. Again, this is not me passing the buck. But I, I mean, what I can do in my role is make sure that you, as uh, as the chairman of the, of the parish council, as well as any yep. constituent, nothing is above or below my pay grade. If it means yep. that I can get it done for you, I'll do it. Yep. Um, if you get in touch with me specifically about those, we can talk about it and see whether we can lobby uh, the council. What what needs to happen, though, as, a, as parishes, and I'm a big fan of parish councils, is that they do need to be consulted all the way through. You represent people just as I do. Yeah. Uh, and we need to make sure that we come together. Uh, and that sounds a bit wishy-washy, but me, the borough, the county, you know, look, the county, I don't think necessarily listens to people as well as it should. I don't think the borough does either. That's not a political point. That's just, you know, the different levels. Yeah, yeah. 
of layers that we've got. You represent people right on the ground. Uh, let's have a conversation after this, and then you yep. can feed back to people that watch this, and we could we can try and, and sort something out about that. Yeah, okay. There are a couple of questions coming in. Um, in our local junior school, they still have temporary buildings, yet the number of children decreasing is not ideal. Um, yeah, that's completely true, Michelle. Thank you for pointing that out. We do. Um, a junior school does have three, four, maybe five port cabins. Um, and yeah, so we've got a massive influx of, of pupils coming into school. Where are we going to put them? Um, which kind of leads me on to, to something else that I wasn't going to I wasn't going to bring up, but I will in a minute. Um, Simon also mentions, does Paul have an opinion on wider issues concerning the airport expansion and new freeport status, especially around employment and potential? I'm going to come on to actually, no, let's do that now. Paul, <laughs> freeport, what is freeport? Some people might not know what it is because um, it's been announced today. Um, is it going to affect an um, it, is it going to be good for our area? Is it going to be like Simon's put their employment potential? Well, Simon's asked, a, Simon's asked a perfect question because, as you know, that was announced today uh, oh, yes. by the councillor. I've been working with uh, Hampshire MPs across the spectrum. Eastleigh Borough Council have lobbied on this too to get a Freeport awarded in the south. It is a good thing for the area. Basically, what is a Freeport? A Freeport is a is a is obviously a port. Well, not it won't go down to that amount of basics, but uh, it has special tax and customs statuses. So after leaving the European Union, uh, the, the Chancellor decided that actually what, one of the great things that we can do now is set up free ports. It means that the travel of goods in and out of the country will be easier. It means that there are duty free and tax free uh, statuses that come in. Uh, the free port here that's been proposed by the Solent bid, uh, sorry, Solent LEP, the local, uh, local partnership um, and councils and, and myself um, covers Portsmouth, Southampton, Eastley, Air, Southampton Airport. That will that's there's a proposal in to make that a duty free, tax free site, uh, and it means that we will get more uh, investment coming into the area. Already, what we seem to think uh, based on this bid is that 52,000 jobs will be created across the whole of the Solent region. It will mean more businesses invest locally, more high tech businesses, particularly around green travel, green aviation, uh, much more research and development coming in. And we also reckon that it will add about three billion pounds to the local economy, but also the national economy. So more jobs will put Solent, uh, the Solent region on the map, more uh, more money coming in, more people earning more. And I think it's a really good thing. And it's been a long campaign by the councils, by me as an MP uh, to try and get that sorted. And thankfully, you know, Rishi, who's a Southampton boy after all, uh, yeah. Or it's good, saw us do good. So that's that's uh, that's what I think. On the airport expansion, if I may, yeah. uh, my view has been pretty clear through this. I support the extension to the airport, to, to the runway. It is desperately needed, particularly after Flybe collapsed last year. Uh, we need a vibrant regional airport to ensure that we have people that, to ensure that people can travel, but also ensure that the regional economy is, is kept going by people using Southampton Airport. We are very lucky. We have an airport that is next to a railway station that has links to London. I'd much rather see people use a vibrant regional airport in Southampton than going up to Gatwick or Heathrow and driving up there. So it is, it's very important for employment. It's very important for the economic uh, benefits that we will get in the area. I've long supported it. And I think the fact that the government's put this short uh, shortlisted the bid for the Solent um, Freeport shows that they also think that we need a vibrant airport in the southeast. Yeah, I mean, it can only be a good thing. I mean, especially, you know, given the COVID, two million people now out of work. Um, so, yeah, if we can if we can boost the, the employment in our area, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, another question that I've got for you, Paul, um, there, uh, we've kind of touched on it already. Um, I'm going to read it out to you in case I get it wrong. So drive to put lots of housing. So there has been a drive to put lots of housing on the peninsula versus the lack of provision of how to get cars on and off the peninsula for work. Hamble Lane, the M27 Junction 8 is awful at Russia. I can take somewhere in the region more housing on the peninsula can take anything 20 minutes um, to get to Southampton General Hospital out of rush hour can take over an hour in the rush hour partly southampton traffic uh, mostly hamble lane and m27 and that kind of brings me to the point where a lot of the developments that are happening the first i don't know if i've already mentioned it but the first point of call is always or the first feedback that comes back is hampshire highways hampshire oh. highways always turn around and say there's not a problem with hamble lane 
Mm. Now, I guarantee if any one of those on Ham uh, on Hampshire highways lived in Hamble, Netley or Bursledon, um, they wouldn't say there's a problem on the Hamble Peninsula getting out and on that road. Mm. Um, so, and especially, you know, what with the, the gravel extraction that, extraction site that's going to be coming in a few years as well, it's only going to impact things worse. So uh, we need our MPs' help. I, I, know, I know I pledge that to you. So uh, I am working very, very, it's only since today's announcement, but I'm putting together a bit to get that levelling up funding for, for the roundabout and Hamble Lane. I think that is a start. It's not everything, but that is nope. a start. Um, and uh, you're absolutely right to mention the, the length of time. I went down to do uh, a, a bit of a, a story with the press about a pavement that's needed outside of Hamble School because yep. of the dangers down there. That interview was going to take place at nine in the morning. I was stuck there and, and I know it's a big issue. Uh, I will ensure to do, I will do whatever I can to make sure that we get that investment. I will speak to the county again about it. I, I mean, to be fair to the county, I think you're right in your assessment that says that you know, traffic, they don't have a problem there. But they did recognise there'd be a problem, uh, for example, if the GE aviation site was uh, accepted and, you know, the traffic, traffic and roads was one of the main causes for that to be uh, rejected by the borough council, but also... Yep county picked that out and the borough council did the right thing in that i also objected to that um mm. but, you know i i recognize there's a problem it is one of the three things you know infrastructure is a big thing going on across the constituency handle lane comes up all the time it is something that i am working with ministers to try and get some funding for i am working with the county on it i had a meeting with the county last week specifically about handle lane and how we can try and unlock some of that central government investment it may take a while but if I don't do something about Hamble Lane and, and tr don't at least try to get something done, then I'm not doing my, my job properly. Uh, and okay. it's a, my radar. Cool. There's another one that's just come in. The plan inspector didn't agree with Hampshire Highways. A very important decision recently, as Paul knows. Well, this is from one of our uh, borough councillors, and he might, have yeah. to, uh, he might have to elaborate on that. But... Um, but otherwise, uh, if it's, we'll, we'll, unless we we'll leave, if it's, I don't want to get into a party political. Um, no, 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 it won't be party political for me. But actually, Adam and I are, are at one on the GE Aviation site, and he will know that the uh, Hampshire Highways did uh, uh, say that there were traffic issues on Hamble Lane, which means that which is the reason why GE Aviation was rejected. Um, but if he wants to elaborate, I'm happy to answer. But Adam, Adam and I have a different view on their housing plans. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Um, so, Paul, we're going to come to come to the end. We've been on for for half an hour. And I, I know you're very important and very very. Your time is very precious. With all the local elections coming up, um, if somebody, you know, somebody, we're going to get these ballot papers through soon. We know this area is very um, very politically heavy in one direction. Um, why? What? What value do you bring? What, to locally? Yeah. Do I bring as the Member of Parliament? Yeah. Well, I well, what I've said, so you are right. Yes. <laughs> no, well, no, right. No, go on, elaborate a bit more, because your question... Well, you're saying, yeah, I, 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 I'm putting you on the spot. So it's like, well, well, I'd like to know what you bring. You know, hopefully, because we had discussions with MIMS in the past, what I don't mm. want us to do is, is from, you know, we've got all these people online now, is I'd like to feel that we can build up a relationship and we can start working mm. working and start and using and are uh, using the power of our mp to help our mm. peninsula which is struggling and mm. we're drowning and and i'd like to know you know is there anything else that we're not that you're going to bring to the table for us and why yeah. people vote why why should people vote blue well firstly the reason that i this is a really good question so you are right to say that the the, the, the borough is uh, levered one way. What do I bring as the MP, right? So at the moment, I am the Lone Ranger. I am the only person in my borough or in our borough that uh, represents my party. Um, I champion, I write all the time to the borough council who do a lot of good things, but I write all the time to ministers. My job is to make sure that I put my constituency on the map to get the investment that we need. I think we're starting to do that. You know, the, the, the big things are the airport expansion, uh, Hamble Lane, looking at town centre rejuvenation, looking at um, the housing numbers, which I've been doing at the moment. Why should people vote blue locally? Well, firstly, I need a team that uh, can deliver locally for people. Now, I don't think it's any secret, I'm not being overly political, that the borough council is led by one party. 
And many people come to me as the MP exasperated because they say to me they're making the wrong decisions. Now, everyone has a view on that, right? I think they're making the wrong decisions. Many people tell me they are. But I need a team that have a vision for your area uh, to be able to deliver things directly on the ground that I can't do as an MP. Now, whether that means reducing the number of houses that we are going to build, because we're not going to put up a half a billion pound debt that the local borough council has, and we'll sort out the finances, we can do that. But what I would say to local people is that as you met MP, I can do so much, but I do need a team, preferably of my party, to make sure that we can make the area better. Well, I am making sure that I work really hard politically and as the MP to show people as these local elections come up our vision for the area. Our yeah. candidate is a guy called Michael Preston. He wants a he wants a pavement down at a uh, Hamble School. He wants to make sure that we have a local plan in place that stops ha uh, speculative housing developments like we've seen. The administration at the moment hasn't delivered that. There is a vast difference between what I want to do with a team uh, compared to what's currently going on. But I can only do that if people vote one way. I hope it's my way. They may to choose to still vote the way that you've described. I don't have an argument with that, but people do, do now have the power to change the direction that our borough is going in. And I hope that they do that in May. And the only other question I've got is a lot of people will turn around and say, well, not being funny, we've got them in the ivory tower at the moment and we've got the blues, we've got the reds, we've got the greens, we've got all the other different multicolours that are out there, but you're all as bad as each other. Why should we even bother voting? Well, I, I don't think we are as bad as each other. I mean, uh, 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 you expect me to say that about myself. I am. No, 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 no. I'm just I, it's, it's a random question that I know people have going to people have asked. And I, you know, I've said turn around to even myself and said, but. What, why should I bother? Nobody's listening. Well, it's very, well, I think it's really important to say no matter what party people come from, including people not in mind, we do listen and I listen. And, and the things that you see me go on about on Twitter, you mentioned a Twitter spat, are because people are coming through to me. Mm -hmm. The people that, uh, the things that people come through to councillors on, no matter what party, they do care and they do listen. However, what I'd say is it's very hard for me to make the changes that I want because we've been run by one party for 25 years. Uh, that's my fault and that's my party's fault for not putting up a strong opposition. Hopefully people have seen that there is a now an alternative. That's up to me to try and convince people. But I listen every day to try and make sure that we get the improvements that we need. And to be fair, we've got a borough councillor watching. He does too. He's written to me about things and we try and work together when we can. But I want my councillors, my candidates to be elected so that we can make the changes on the things that my constituents write into me about, the green space is going, the amount of housing coming through, the lack of infrastructure, the fact that our council doesn't listen to objections about housing developments on Hamble Lane. They are the kind of things that I want to have a team of councillors around me to do to make, make the changes that we need. But they have the power to make those decisions in May and only they are going to be able to decide who represents them locally. Well, indeed so. And talking of our borough councillor, our borough councillor is on in a couple of weeks' time. So um, we're looking forward to having having discussion and an open and frank discussion with him as we, we have with you this evening, Paul. Uh, Paul, on behalf of the Parish Council, the 26 people watching and however many people are watching on Facebook, thank you ever so much for your time. Um, obviously, we will follow this up. I'm going to take you up on it. When yeah. COVID lifts, we, go, we will pop down to Grange Road. We will address it. We'll see what we can get done, even if it means we have to lay down in the road and block the road, we will do. Um, Mark, can I say to you, thank you for yes. what you do as a parish council as well. Thank you for the invitation. I know how hard you work uh, and I look forward to working even harder together over the next few years. Yeah, we thank you ever so much. We have a we've got a wonderful team working in the office and a wonderful team of parish councillors. So yeah, we're very we're very privileged. So um, but thank thank you ever so much for your time this evening. And I'll let you get back to hopefully by this time at night at five past eight. You must be on for a, a wee dram of something hopefully. But by um, myself and isolated, and then the train home. I think so. Um, no, yeah, okay. I'm looking forward to dinner. Thank you very well, much, Mark. No worries. Safe travels. Take care, and thank you again for your time. We'll speak to you soon. Oh, scary face of me. There we go. David, welcome back. Yes, oh, good good stuff. Good chat. So there was a quite quite a good stuff come out of it. And there's hopefully there's a bit of, you know, some legwork that we can do afterwards. Um, um, we will. We've we've had our MP say I'm going to speak to our, our MP now with regards to the traffic regulation orders that have come out. See if anything can, we, can be done. We know it's an EBC thing. If you don't agree with what EBC are doing with the traffic regulation orders, get on their website and oppose it. Say why you don't want things to happen or if you like it again, equally. 
put your comments forward. Um, then what can happen? Yeah, um, Heather and Simon and Adam, you're welcome. Um, it, the what we can then do is um, we can then move forward things we can hopefully as I said in a couple of weeks time we've got the borough councillor coming on and uh, the borough councillor we will tie down to exactly the same work out why we're not getting the infrastructure work out what we can do to improve our area um, he's coming up on the 17th I think David isn't it 17th is, yeah yep. two weeks tonight and that's been confirmed so um so let, let's move on. We're done with MPs. We're done with the uh, news in Hound a hundred years ago. <laughs> From <laughs> I, found, I found two. There's two pieces you put out. One of them. Uh, this has come from the History Society, so it's not it's not anything I've researched. Uh, very no, the very other kindly, thing, they've sent this through to us, so uh, thank you very thing much that for I that. Will, yeah, 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 completely. The other thing that I will say, um, various people have been send, signposting me through to something called Netley Abbey Matters. It's on the internet. Um, I, I don't know the people that put it together, but my goodness, what a wonderful wealth and source of information that that is, and the hours that you've put in, thank you ever so much. I am thoroughly... Um, enjoying my time reading that in in the evenings just before bedtime but anyway the national association of discharged sailors and soldiers uh, whist drives are being are coming increasingly popular at netley the secretary has been fortunate in obtaining the services of mr a e cunningham as mc the prize winners last week were ladies first mrs gladman second mrs clark gentlemen first mr conwell and second mr watts miss West was uh, responsible for the catering. And that was Hampshire Independent on the 4th of the 3rd in 1921. This is a little bit controversial. I'm going to go with it, David. Oh, I don't know which one for. <laughs> well, this is, again, Hampshire Independent on the 4th of the 3rd. This isn't really news. Oh. This is an advert for Corset Fashions for 1921. Mr. E. Maidens and Sons Limited <laughs> draw particular attention to the extensive range now um, on exhibition in their lobby windows. Uh, the worst and Palace Royals JB front lacing models. There will be found not only a corset for every figure, but models. I'm looking closely. Not, there are no pictures. I'm just trying to read. It's very small print, which are designed to, to meet the variety of needs of modern women in the fields of sport and social functions of all kinds. The prizes are most moderate for such distinctive creations. Um, that was, again was on the fourth of the third. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought we'd end it on a little bit light note because we were getting a little bit drawn into the world of MPs. So, but, um... <laughs> I was going to say that just going back to what you were saying before you did the news there, the Netley, uh, Netley Abbey Matters, I will put yep. the uh, link to that in the comments below this as well. Uh, so if anyone yeah, else no, is interested do. in that, they can have a look. It's a, a fascinating route and it's still being updated. So um, they're doing a wonderful job of updating that. Um, so upcoming dates for the diary, David, what have we got? <laughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, I'm just looking at, uh, we've just had a, a laughing emoji come in, I suspect, for your course at uh, news <laughs> item. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we've got on Monday evening, uh, we've got a council meeting, uh, seven o'clock Monday evening. Um, that will be live streamed again through our YouTube channel. So uh, if you want to see it, click the like button, the button. Uh, little, little, the little bell uh, will notify you um, and remind you of that. Um, we've got Keith uh, House, uh, leader of the the Borough Council and also the County Councillor, Hampshire County Councillor for our, for our area. Uh, he was on our news vlog uh, two weeks tonight, uh, so this uh, Wednesday the 17th. Uh, and of course, just advertised today, um, we have a vacancy on Hound Parish Council. Um, no no by-election was called, so we can co-opt. Uh, that vacancy notice went out this afternoon. Uh, so if anyone is interested, uh, it's on our news page. Uh, I will put the link again uh, below in the comments. Um, have a look at it. Uh, if you're interested, get in touch. I'll more than happily uh, discuss, answer any questions you have. Um, but please do get in touch uh, if you're interested in becoming a councillor. A parish councillor with um, you and I and a few others. Mm. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's it for this evening. Um, again, reminders to subscribe to the channel, click the like button, follow us on Facebook and 
Twitter or whatever David puts up. Um, if you've got any questions you want to send in to any of us, if there's any planning issues or anything like that that you're concerned with, anything happening around the village that you're concerned with, either email David through the inquiries at Helm Parish Council. Um, the uh, might also you might want to get in touch with any of the councillors directly um, and then obviously you can find our email addresses on our web pages failing that you can con david are you still there he's still there uh, failing there. that you can get hold of the parish office still because that they david will still be able to answer emails and man the phone so there's no no issues there at all um, the li live chat through the uh, the web page as well yep and apart from that, I think it's 12 minutes past eight on Wednesday. We've been going for 41 minutes, 21 people still live. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, please remember, we're still in COVID. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. Look after your families. Look after your friends. Look after your neighbours. More importantly, stay away from everybody. David, say good night. Good night. It's a good night from David and a good night from me. Take care.